Well, hello. Welcome to Mr. Simonson's Art Emporium, another episode. All right, today we are going to be making abstract digital art. We are continuing in with the vein of a digital theme so that we could work from almost anywhere off of almost any technology, um, a device that you may have. Uh, you could work off a phone, a touchscreen computer if you had one, or even a tablet, all right? I highly recommend getting a stylus of some sort so you have that more precise end to work from, but um, if you are dexterous enough, so maybe you use your finger, that's fine too, all right? So today we're gonna go ahead and get right on in and go right to the screen. Okay. So with our drawing for today, be sure if you haven't already looked, take a look at the supporting material videos on how to find an appropriate app. Really, it's up to you as to what app you want to use. Um, it could be any app. As long as you're comfortable with it and you can manage in doing what you need to do, then you're all set. Okay, so for my app, we're going to go to the menu. And what we're going to do is we want to find something that's more of like a dry oil. We're going to go with the dry oil. Keep the size down. All right, so working in the app, we're going to go with the dry oil. We're going to have our brush about, oh, 20-ish percent across, just a little bit over, okay? And we're going to make sure that the opacity, remember again, the opacity is for the strength of the color, okay? So you want to make sure that that's all the way over. We're gonna go with our primary colors. Now there are three primary colors within the art world. Red, yellow, and blue, okay? We're gonna start off with those. So I'm a big fan of red, so I'm gonna start off with red. And what this is, we're just gonna kinda of really let it flow, okay? We're just gonna kind of draw across the page. Really just let your imagination take you wherever you wanna go. Maybe think about a shape Maybe you think about um, various things in your life. Maybe you think about specific shapes. I'm fond of cubes. I've always thought they were pretty cool. Once in undergrad, I built a four foot by four foot steel cube that I contained kind of what uh, mass form, something that I was kind of making, and that was pretty cool. So I've got a lot of red down. That looks pretty good. Let's switch over to our as our primary color and let's go with blue. Okay, so I'm just gonna throw a bunch of blue down, not really thinking about too much. And of course I can overlap. I can go on top of my other color, red. I'm gonna throw that blue in there. Kind of really, not thinking too much about what I'm doing. I just wanna kind of really be free with this color. Okay, maybe I think of a specific shape. I could think about maybe Getting more of a square shape in there. Okay, let's make this one a little bit more squarish. And maybe just a little bit right there. All right, now our third primary color, yellow. Okay, always been a big fan of yellow myself. When I was in kindergarten, we had a drawing that we did at the very start of class of the year, and then the very end, and the drawing at the very beginning kindergarten for me was completely yellow because I love the color gold yellow and so it was all yellow and then at the very end of course big change had lots of different colors and not just yellow all right so I've got a lot of color in there let's just throw a little bit more red so I'm just gonna go over this just with a little bit more of the red I want to make sure I cover up. I don't want too much white poking through. All right, I like that. So now what we're going to do is, if you want to embellish it a little bit more, we can add in some secondary colors. Now there are the three primary colors. These colors make all other colors. All other colors are possible to be made from our red, yellow, blue. Our secondary colors, green, orange, purple, are made from our primaries. Now we can mix our primary and our secondary, but you cannot make mix secondary colors in any way to get a true primary. Primaries are 
the start. You cannot get primary from secondaries, but we can make more combinations with secondaries and primaries. So again, secondary color, green, orange, purple. Primaries, blue, red, yellow, okay? So I'm a big fan of green. My son loves green. So let's just throw in a little bit of green, okay? So we're gonna just put a little bit of green. Maybe I'm gonna kind of attach it to the blue. They always go well together. Kind of throw that in there. Cover up some of my red. Build off of there. Maybe throw in a couple little cubes. Cubish shapes. Okay. Again, don't overthink it. We're just throwing colors down. Okay, now I'm gonna go with purple. Just because I think purple and green are a great combo. Throwing in that color, just gonna a little bit of an emphasis. And of course, we shouldn't leave out orange. And I'm just gonna throw a little bit of orange in here between my red and yellow, because of course, red and yellow make orange. So why not kind of make it a little bit of a gap, a bridge between those two. All right. So now we've got lots of colors down there. What we're gonna do is go to our menu tool and we're gonna get a blender tool. So let's experiment a little bit with the strength and sizes. We're gonna put them about 30-ish percent. We can zoom in, of course, and we're just gonna, ooh, 30%, very strong. So let's do it just a little bit at 30%. Gonna throw some of this down, okay? Now let's go back and drop that down a bit. And this is just to kind of course abstract it a bit more I do also like the feel of the colors so we're just going to throw a little bit in there and we can always go back and add some more in okay and this is a great way to also kind of hide and mask some of that white that may have been left over all right looks pretty good let's go back to our oil brush. I'm gonna get some more red, okay? And I'm gonna just add this onto a new layer. So I go to that layer menu, and I go in and create a brand new layer, okay? So I'm just going to maybe just throw in a little bit more red, just so I have a little bit more of a crisp line. Just going to be pretty brief with this, not anything too crazy. And of course, you could always adjust brush sizes. I'm using a fairly small brush size. And if you wanted a bigger brush size, then you should use that. Okay. Make sure we get our blue and our yellows. Really, I'm just not overthinking this at all. Just kind of really letting it flow and not thinking too much about what I'm doing with the lines, okay? All right. Now, I could really zoom in. Great thing we've talked about before, but the um, great thing about digital work is you can always zoom, so that's awesome, is you can zoom in and really get a close view of what you're looking at and what you're doing. Okay. All right. I like what I'm seeing there. So now what we're going to do is we are going to move to a more refined brush. So I'm gonna grab this fountain pen and I'm going to move into a black. I'm gonna make sure that my fountain pen is quite small. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom way in. Also, don't forget to add a new layer. What I'm gonna do is just merge this layer down, okay, and make sure I'm on a new layer. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to outline specific colors. Okay, then I'm just gonna kind of go through and outline different parts. Maybe some of this yellow. Maybe throw a little bit in on this spot. Okay. And really it's just a matter of adding in some of that black tone. And you could change the sizes. You could also add in extra lines really just kind of using this to outline 
specific shapes. Changing the line thickness. We'll just add a little bit of diversity. Seeing little tones inside of other tones and outlining them um, will really allow you to expand about that. And really try to add in like different types of lines. Not even just solid outlining a shape, but maybe just some dashes around. Ooh, I feel like this shape really needs to be outlined there. Now I've done some pretty small ones. Let's just throw in a couple, you know, let's jump that fountain size up a bit. Add some further variety. I think with these I'll just be more like making some marks that I can just add in. A little embellishing. Maybe I'll kind of focus in on this area. Really just about responding to your own kind of ideas, your own mark making, your own patterns is really what abstract art is about. It's kind of feeling the movement and the kind of allowing the art to just kind of make itself. Seeing what's there, not overthinking things. Yeah, there we go. All right, let's jump that size back down. Outline just a little bit more. Really being free with the marks there. There. And we're done. Not anything too crazy, but abstract art is a little bit of a different kind of process and you could add more or less and really just be kind of free with it. Abstract art is very really about responding to what you're doing and kind of making different movements and really being more free with it and not overthinking it. If you're really sitting there and you're kind of really evaluating the marks that you're making that could be a good process for you but it also could be an opportunity for you to be more free with what you do and kind of just explore okay all right so thank you for joining me on another episode of mr simonson's art emporium see you next time